Hello crafters and welcome to Peter P Crafts Lockdown Lives brought to you by From Pitchy to Page Beyond Paper Craft Shows. I'm your host Michelle Brown, Creative Director from Pitchy to Page which is our scrapbooking, mixed media art and paper crafting community. Now Peter P Crafts Lockdown Lives is bringing you some of our best retailers and demonstrations that will cover scrapbooking, card making, mixed media, art journaling and more. So for all the details of the Lockdown down Lives and to catch up with the replays head over to our website from Pitchy to Page and Beyond au where you can see all who's coming up get all the links to the retailers and keep up to date and while you're there make sure you're on our email list so we can get those updates straight into your inbox now whether you're watching here live on facebook or you're watching a replay in facebook or youtube we would love to know that you're there so give us a thumbs up pop down and leave a comment ask any questions and jennifer and i will do our very best to keep on top of them so today we've got lockdown live with jennifer from crafters cupboard hi jennifer Hi Michelle, how are you? We're going well. It's so good that you could join us today. We've got a special little project to share with everyone. Yes, this is a follow on from the recent Picture to Page show in Hagenham, uh -huh. which although it was only about 10 days ago, seems a little bit like a lifetime with it what's does. going on in Melbourne now. <laughs> Um, we were just so lucky with our weekend, weren't we? We certainly were. Yeah. So at the demo table at our stand at Picture to Page, I got a lot of people coming up to me and expressing all sorts of things from what what is art journaling all about? Uh -huh. Why do you do it? And um, And what do you do with it after you've done it? And I think for all of us, it is really more about the process of doing your journal page rather than the outcome. The outcome is just the pretty result at the end. What do we do with it? Well, we look at it, we learn from what we have did, we work out what we like using in terms of materials and in terms of colours, and we go along to an art journaling group and we share what we've done with people. And people will say, that's beautiful, how did you do it, what did you use? I also enjoy just picking up my journals and flicking through them and looking back at the different things that I've created. And there are a lot of memories in your art journals. And for people, art journaling isn't necessarily just about art. There's also that journal component where you might want to write something on your page as well. And it might be intelligible or unintelligible writing, depending on whether you want to share your thoughts and your feelings. Some people will scribble down and get everything out onto the paper and then they cover it up completely with rice papers and paint and all those other things. Other people will put words on their page after they've done the bulk of their art journal. And it might just be a quote or a word or a phrase that means something to them. I'm into a semic writing where I do a lovely little <laughs> scribble and I say exactly what's in my head at that particular point in time. And, um, and it could be about the mother-in-law or it could be about COVID-19 or it could be about a frustrating teenager. But you scribble it down and as you're scribbling it, you're letting the words come out, go on to paper. And even I can't read what I write in the semic writing the very next day because the thought has gone. So it's a therapeutic process. And I think during the difficult times that we're all going through, be it here in Australia or anywhere in the world, because there's not too many countries that haven't suffered from this pandemic, um, it's an opportunity to just get away and be creative and get lost in the process and forget about everything else for a while. Yeah. So and that's, that's a really good point, isn't it, Jennifer? That's why we called it Feel the Fear and Do It Anyway, because I'm sure even yeah. those of us that have art journaled for a while can remember back to a time where perhaps the blank page was scary or we didn't want to use up our good supplies or we were worried about putting different colours together. So we can really, you know, still remember those days. We can. And if you're new to journaling, it is about Feel the Fear and Do It Anyway. So... Um, Today, what I'm going to do is pretty simplistic, really. And all you need is something with colour in that you can stick down. Mm -hmm. You need a bit of paint mm -hmm. and maybe a couple of stamps and some Posca pens or a marker or something like that so that you can do a little bit of scribble. I'm just going to use a plain old uni ball eye pen from Officeworks. Mm -hmm. 
for a little bit of what I'm going to do. So you don't need mega materials. You don't need a craft room full of all sorts of stuff. You just need a few simple things and you can get started. And I just want to say too that here at Crafters Cupboard, we have several art journaling groups which run regularly. And people say to me, oh, is it on your website? Can I book in? Um, every now and then I run a basics art journaling class and people sign up for that one and it's advertised and then they form a group and that group the nucleus of the group mm -hmm. tends to just carry on and they have their day in the month when they come and it's a set you know like the second Sunday of the month as an example and I've got groups that have been coming to us now for six and seven oh, years fantastic. doing art journaling and every now and then we sit there and we go how many years has it been now? And we and, and it's just amazing. So people clearly get a lot from doing art journaling. They clearly enjoy it. And they're getting that sense of community at the same time. They're meeting up with like-minded people. And I hear some of my ladies, they call it coming to their art class. I've, I've got ladies who've been prepared to give up Mother's Day to come to their art class. Wow, that is a so commitment. It means, it means, yes, but it means a lot to them. And that's the point I'm trying to make is that for them, it is this release, it's this get away from everything, it's switch off from the world time. And I think that is the core nub of what art journaling is all about. It's about that creativity and just getting lost in the moment and forgetting the rest of the world for a little while. Yeah, that sounds like a great plan. Well, let's jump into it and get started. Okay. Okay, so while Jennifer does that, we'll say hi, Carol, hi, Debbie, hi, Olivia, thanks for joining us, hi, Tracy, Anne. So yes, we are going to face the fear and get stuck into art journaling. So whether you've been journaling for a while or whether you've been thinking about it or whether it's not even quite on your radar yet, this is going to be a great way to get started. And Jennifer's going to give us just a few of those tips and tints, tips and hints, that'd be it to get us started. So I think Jennifer's ready, so we'll get we'll jump in. Let's go, Jennifer. Thanks, Michelle. Right, well, what I'm using today is actually an art by Marlene Rainbow Journal. And these are sort of a nice little size for anyone who wants to get started. Comes with a nice rainbow band to hold it together. And inside you've got little booklets. There's one lined one and then there's four with really good quality watercolour paper in them. Quite stiff. So they're going to take any wet that you throw at it in the way of glue or paint or whatever. So what I love about this journal is that you can just slip the little booklets out like so and then you can pop them back in again oh, and it holds them all together. So they're great and they're, I think these are perfect for people who want to get started. So I've got an orange coloured one out today and you can see that the the back of it's got a little bit of paint splatter and so on on it and I've used this one on the show stand and um, created a few art journal pages and that's what we're basically going to do today is carry on with this journal and you'll see how quick and easy these pages are to, to do because in every single one of them I've used scrap FX rice papers or collage so today I'm going to go with a rice paper and I've chosen this pretty pink one here. It's got nice pink flowers. It's got an insect on the flower. It looks like some kind of a, I don't know, a prickly nut. It'll be something interesting. A spider hanging off and the beautiful rosebud here. And while this is absolutely beautiful, when you're using a rice paper, the best thing to do is to tear it. You don't get jagged, sharp edges like you do when you're using a pair of scissors. And I'm not going to be overly fussy as long as I get the edges all removed. Now, the reason for using the rice paper is to get some colour and a focal point into my page. Now, by doing this, I don't have to think any harder than that because the colour that we're going to look at putting into the page around this focal point of the rice paper is all decided for us. We're going to look at using some pinks and we're going to be using some greens maybe. So I might just take this out. There, 
so there I've got my rose. I can play around with it a little bit. Do I want it looking like that? No, I think I want it looking like that. And then with that, you quickly grab a glue brush. Slap some, I'm just using a matte medium here. Mm -hmm. There are lots of products out there on the market that are great for putting down rice papers. And for people who don't know whether they really want to get into doing this sort of thing, if you don't want to use a rice paper, you can do a similar effort with a serviette. You can peel back the back plies of a serviette and use that as well if you want to. So I've put plenty of matte medium over the book. Why have I done that on the page? Because if I try to wet the back of this rice paper, because it's quite delicate, then in all likelihood, it will tear. So once I've put it down, stretch it out a bit to make sure that there are no wrinkles. I'm going to go over the top again with the matte medium left on the brush, scooping a little bit more, to make sure that all those edges are blended out. And you can find that... If you push your brush out towards the edges of the paper, then you're going to smooth out any wrinkles, but also your torn edge is going to start to blend into the journal page itself because the fibres in the paper start meshing into the fibres of the art journal. And I'm giving it a real good brush, as you can see. It's almost starting to break down on the edges, so I know that it is pretty much enmeshed into that page. And that's it. It's there. I've got my focal point. I've got colour. So for those of you that are spooked out by the colour wheel and you don't know what paint colours to use, those decisions have been made for you with this process. We'll put our little acorn or chestnut or whatever it is down in the corner. Now, by doing this... I've pretty much filled up the page, so I haven't got much to worry about at all in terms of what to do next. So then a little bit of paint, and I'm just going to use the paint to fill in the white space that's left around it. So my first question is, what colour of paint do I want to use? And so what I'm choosing today is the paper artsy paints, and I've lined up Blamange, Blush, Vintage Lace. They're not going to overpower the flower itself on the page, and a little bit of finger painting is the order of the day here. Need to give the paints a really good shake. Don't even need a paintbrush for this. And as you can see, I'm going over the edges of my rice paper and I'm doing this to blend it in. And if it gets a little bit too intense for me, I can always knock it back with a baby wipe. You just literally take your baby wipe and just wipe it away a little bit. So just a bit of that. Introduce a little bit more of this maybe apricot colour. Do I like it? Not sure. I'm going to try some blancmange again from Paper Artsy. And for ladies that came to the Crafters Cupboard Stand at the craft show, you'll probably, some of you will remember watching this process then. And I had one lady who was absolutely fascinated because she just honestly didn't realise that you could make it so quick and so easy and so simple. So, so far... It's been all about gluing down something, be it a piece of rice paper like this lovely scrap FX one with the rose, or you could just glue down an image out of a magazine if you really wanted to. I love using the rice papers. Scrap FX have got a fantastic range of different patterns, and um, they're so easy to tear. They have wonderful colours in a lot of them, but you can also get black and white ones too and they make life simple. They also do some nice collage sheets. I don't Have you seen them, Michelle, the Scrap FX collage sheets? Yes, they're just wonderful. They are. And I think one of the best things about them is that it's a Melbourne product. Scrap FX is an Australian company based here in Melbourne, mm -hmm. and um, I appreciate the fact that they're local. <laughs> so I never have a supply problem, even in a pandemic. I'm not dependent on international freight companies. They pick up our products 
that we buy overseas and we're never quite too sure when they're actually going to turn up on the doorstep. <laughs> So at this stage, I'm taking it out to the edges almost. I'm leaving a little bit of white space around the edge because white space can add interest to your art journal pages too. Now, as I'm going over the edges of the rice paper, I'm blending it in so that those edges appear to start coming into the rice paper itself and don't look quite so obvious. Knocking back a little bit on the edges. So we're getting close to being almost done with the paint part. And we will do a little bit more with paint later on if we're not happy with how we're looking. And there is something so therapeutic about getting your fingers in the paint as well. Oh, I love getting messy. <laughs> I've got some friends who just roll their eyes. You know, they're true what I call paper crafters. And to be fair, I used to be one of those too, where you, you like everything to be clean, straight lines, cut lines, but you don't get that full, um, what would you call it, emotional release of making a mess unless you get your fingers in and you really smudge it around. So at this stage, I'm at what I would call the ugly stage of the page. It doesn't really look anything like you would might hope it would look. It's just getting down that first layer of paint because we're going to be building up a little bit of background. And that's what it is. So I might, I just might pop a little bit of green in here. Do I like it? Mm, a bit too pepperminty, perhaps. But that doesn't matter because by the time you just rub it in, it's just giving that hint of green without overpowering and it takes away a bit of the pink. The mess is really coming to the fingers now. <laughs> it is such a pretty colour though. Yes, this is one of the new um, greens. They put out a new, Paper Arts put out a new range of greens a little while ago. And this colour's frosty and it is quite nice. Now it's looking a little bit too green in there for me. So I'm just going to quickly grab a bit of white and knock it back. Just a little bit, not too much. And this is the beauty of white. I'm using Paper Artsy Snowflake and you can just dumb it down a little bit. Now, the next question is, what do I do with the leftover paint? What <laughs> indeed? So, Jennifer, what do you do with the leftover paint? Ah, well, I'm about to do some stenciling on here to sort of build up my layers and my background. But if I have leftover, leftover, even at the end of that activity, then I tend to just flick open another page further on and grab a paintbrush and just slap it all down. It doesn't really matter about the colours because you're going to do other stuff with it anyway. You're going to go over it with stencils and stamping and whatever. So one of the key secrets to art journaling is layering. You need to layer up your pages. Just that one layer, if you said, oh, well, that's it, I've put down a layer of paint, it's actually not looking great, is it? It's very bland looking. Yeah, like so you said, need... it's just in its getting started phase. Yes, it's absolutely, like I said, the getting started ugly phase. Now, I'm um, going to use these paper artsy stencils, and I love these because some of them are a bit worn, as you can see, but they're just very small patterns. And for a, this was one stencil, which I chopped up, one or two stencils, 
And you've got all these different patterns on the one stencil. So I'm just going through. I quite like that one. I quite like this one. You can tell which ones are my favourites. They're the ones covered in paint. <laughs> So um, choose a few stencils so that you... And Jennifer, Chris has just asked, did you prepare your page with gesso first? No. That's the beauty of paper artsy paints is you don't need to gesso first. You can um, just get into it because being a chalk paint, these act very much like gesso. I'm just grabbing myself a cosmetic sponge. These a paper artsy paint is very much like a gesso effect anyway. So I don't need to separately go in with gesso first. Now what I like to use for stenciling is a very simple cosmetic sponge. Cheap and easy. And you can just start with the end and you can always chop the end off if you want to change the colour. I usually am a little bit, because they don't cost a lot, I'm usually pretty generous with myself and cosmetic sponges. I have a big jar full of them here. So what I'm going to do now is to just dip the end of my cosmetic sponge in the paint. This is vintage lace. And I'm going to start stenciling. And the trick to stenciling with paint is not to have too much paint on your sponge. Yeah, that's a great tip. It can be so frustrating mm. when it doesn't work if you've got too much paint. Exactly. So I tend to dip my sponge in the paint and then um, do a tapping off thing next to on the mat so that I'm tapping off the excess paint before I actually start to put it through the stencil. And what all I'm doing here is building up light layers and I'm quite comfortable with going over the edge of where the paint meets the rice paper because what you're doing then is blending the two together so that those sharp edges aren't so obvious. And rule of thirds, if you can remember if this is your going to be your first foray into art journaling, just remember to do three of something, five of something, seven of something. I don't know what it is, but everyone talks about the rule of thirds and I'm a great believer in it. So I've got a few of those flowers around. I'm now going to look at my leftover frosty paint and try a different pattern. And again, just pick some up on the end of the sponge and I'm doing that through the stencil. And this stencil's had a little bit of a hard life, but that doesn't really matter. Need more paint, Michelle. <laughs> These cosmetic sponges are thirsty today. Mm. So loading up the sponge, tapping it back to make sure we haven't got too much in there. And with stencils, you don't necessarily have to use the whole pattern on the stencil. You can just use bits of it. And that's what I'm doing here as well. Just little bits going on. And although it's very faint, because the background needs to be quite faint to blend in with the, um, the paper that I've used, the rice paper, you can start to see that pattern starting to build up. And I'm just going around the page and banging it in. And I'm also going to use a different pink just to provide a little bit of interest. And I think we might put in a little bit of a contrasting colour as well. Just something to brighten it up just a little bit. And a different stencil. Now we can see that you do already have a bit of paint on those stencils. What's your thoughts about cleaning stencils? <laughs> well... We have a trick in our household. I, I look I, I don't know who to attribute the tip to. I read it on Facebook, as we do with so many things these days. 
and they recommended using Vanish, you know, the product that we all spoke things in. Mm -hmm. So what we have now is just a shallow, quite wide tray Mm -hmm. because some stencils are quite long and wide. And we top it up with some hot water and some Vanish and in they go. Ah, excellent. That's a great tip. Leave them there for about 24 hours. And then you just give them, we've got a grout cleaning brush, which um, has never cleaned grout in its life, but it's certainly cleaned a lot of stamps and stencils. <laughs> and so um, we just give the stencils a light scrub over and the paint just falls off them. It's fabulous. <laughs> and thoroughly recommend it as a way of keeping your stencils clean. So here you go. We're starting to build up some layers. Can you see those? Mm-hmm. Yes, we they're can. Just very, they're just very, very faint. But I'm still, I've got little bits of stenciling starting to pop down and onto. And our little cat, I think he's a praying mantis. He's got a little bit covered in paint, but never mind. So I've still got this feeling that I need to have a little bit of brightness coming through in the background. So tap, tap, tap some more. And I'm going to pick up this one this time. And I think one of the things I love most about doing this is that if you don't like what you've done, then guess what you can do? You <laughs> What's can that, just Jennifer? Keep going. <laughs> keep going. Just layer upon layer upon layer. And you just keep going till you're happy with your end product. And if you're not happy, do it some more. And we have a little bit of a joke, really. I mean, what's the worst that you can do? (laughs) You just, if you don't like it, get out your snowflake or your gesso, paint over it, start again. Now, you'll notice that um, I just keep putting little bits on here and I'm like, "Mm, I'm not quite so sure about that bright pink. It's sort of okay. So I'm going to try a little bit of this stencil and just do the little bit in the middle and start bringing in hints of it elsewhere. Yeah, it certainly looks good from here. It certainly, that stands out a lot more than the lighter colours. Yeah. So the lighter colours provide a good base background, but we did need something to start pulling it together a little bit more. And just by putting that brighter colour near the pink flower, It lifts it up a little bit. And the more I'm I'm not adding any more paint to my sponge. So the more I do this, the lighter that's getting so that you get different shades coming through in the background. And the smaller stencil image starts to pull everything in together. And it's getting rid of a lot of those empty spaces in the background. One of my other favourite colours for doing this kind of thing is gold. Mm. Paper Arts, you do a fantastic gold paint. And now I'm going to just do a little hint of that pattern going into the rice paper so that it's pulling it all together from the painted background into where the rice paper image is. But as you can see, I've not added any more paint to my sponge and I'm still just getting those nice little hints of colour without the colour being too loud. So I've grabbed my green sponge again and see there's still paint in that green sponge. And so just popping a little bit of that in as well, again, to draw the page all in together so that it looks like it belongs. Everything's sort of joined now because we've got some of these patterns from the stenciling out there, but we've got them in and right around the flower on top of the rice paper too. So it's starting to look a little bit better. Now, a darker green, I feel, is also required. Looking at the um, the screen through here, I'm quite keen to get a little bit of that colour in as well. And I've got a different stencil now. And again, I'm keeping the round circular thing going. And I don't know about you, Michelle, but have you noticed that if you do things with circles, they never seem to look out of place? Yes, I think there's always a spot for a circle 
somewhere. Yeah. Yeah, soft lines just give a page appeal, more appeal than sharp lines. And yes, we did need a little bit more of a different green coming through as well. Yeah, it's amazing how it just makes that difference, doesn't it? So you can sometimes hesitate, you think, is it right? And I think it's also good to take photos as you go. Then you can sort of look back and say, okay, yep, that worked. Oh, yeah, maybe next time, not so much. Yeah. So a little bit of green coming through here now. Wow, that makes such a difference. Yes. And that's what I say. You just keep working away at your page until you start to get a happy feel. <laughs> and it is hard to describe, isn't it? Yeah, there's just that feeling you sort of go, ah, oh, okay, I might know what I'm doing. Yes. Starting to look a little bit more like where I want it to go. And at this point, I've probably got a good three to four different layers building up in the page. Now, it doesn't matter if you just use a tiny little bit of your stencil. So you can see what I'm doing now. I'm just sort of going over those oval bits and it's just putting in more of a suggestion of dotting rather than any specific pattern. And it's filling up gaps. And you just keep on filling up your gaps until your happy fields are even more positive than what they were before. <laughs> and look, I've managed to blob a bit of paint in on there. Doesn't matter. Just grab the end of your sponge. You can see I'm not being too fussy at all. And for me, art journaling is very much this process of not worrying about what I'm doing, just kind of go with the flow and see what comes out of it. And the more you loosen up, the happier you become and the better your pages start to look as well. And I, you know, I see people and they sit there and they're striving for perfection. <laughs> well, define perfection. There's no such thing really. So now I'm just going around my edges and making sure that I've got rid of it because, you know, that peppermint green, it did look very pepperminty earlier, mm. but it's slowly disappearing away into becoming something else. And that's the beauty of a good stencil set. It can help you dumb a page down so that in the end, you've got rid of that color that you didn't like. Now, that little center part in there, I'm just putting the, the residue to... It's not quite a circle that's coming out, but it's just little blobs of colour without actually being anything specific. It's not a circle. It's just a little spot of colour, and that circle in the middle of the stencil just gives me a bit of structure to pop that down with. So we're there. I'm not going to play with paint anymore. <laughs> now, one of the key things to do with an art journal page is always 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 have black and white in it just a bit mm -hmm. it's it it pulls your page together and that is a golden rule of art journaling black and white somewhere in the page and frame it at the end so when you when i say frame it i'm sure there's a few eyebrows going up I'm going to use some archival ink and just a bit of cut and dry foam here. And this is framing my page. It's just going around the edge with a bit of foam and giving it that frame. And you can see the difference from that, from the top and the bottom. Mm. The framing pulls the page in. Yeah, so in card it, making or scrapbooking, we'd actually be layering pages. But here without journaling, we're actually creating more of a... a Correct. Border. If I was making a card, I would have been mounting up my main card piece onto a dark card background. So this gives you the, to frame your card. Well, in this case, we're using the archival link to go around the edges and create that same effect. And it makes a mass massive difference to how your page looks. And I'll often look at an art journaling page when it, I think it's done and I'm looking and thinking, what am I missing? What am I missing? <laughs> ah, the frame is missing. You pop that frame in 
And you do need to make your frame fairly obvious. And if you need to go back over it, it doesn't matter. Obviously, I'm trying to be pretty quick here so that I'm giving people the, uh, the general idea without spending too much time labouring on it. It might need a little bit of tickling up later. Yeah, so but you can certainly that, see how the difference it makes. Yes, it does. It makes a massive difference. Now, in my backgrounds, I always like to do a little bit of stamping. And this stamp set, ESN 10, it's an Eclectica stamp by Stira Nauman from Paper Artsy. I call this Old Faithful. And if you look at it, you can <laughs> see it is so battered. You may have it's, used it once or twice before. Oh, my Lord. This stamp would have to be one of our top sellers. And even though it's now a reasonably old stamp age-wise, we call it Old Faithful. <laughs> And it gets used on a very regular basis. So I'm going to use Odd for Old Faithful, and this is how I use it, and people will throw their hands up in horror. No stamping block here, just using the top oh, edge Oh, gosh, of we've it. Had, a, had a bit of stamping without blocks for this series, so we're really challenging that, that thinking. Yeah, let loose completely. Now, this is a script stamp, and it's a very old script. Um, doesn't really matter what it says. The rice paper actually had some script on it, which I've thrown away. So I figured something scripty would be appropriate, and I will probably glue down a little bit of that script as well in a minute. Oh, okay. Okay. But stamping-wise, I'm just going to put, this is getting my black in. You can see I'm not doing very much. And I've turned my page on the side so that I get it reasonably straight. If you're ever doing anything with script, always make sure that you don't do this. Don't put it on angles. Make it in straight lines the way that it would need to be if it was being read. Mm -hmm. oh, okay, that's it, interesting. It, yeah. A lot of people I notice, they start putting what they think are nice angles on the script, but we're used to reading a book, a story, written words in that way, you know, straight line across the page. You read it from there to there. Mm. Or if it was Arabic, you would be reading it from there across to there. You know, you'd be going in the opposite direction. But we don't read things on angles and we don't read them on their side. Mm. So sometimes I will use a script stamp and just go literally up and down because I'm using so little of the script itself. It's the hint of script without actually being something that's readable or intelligible or has any meaning. But again, you can see that little bit of black in the page has again given it a little bit more dimension and a little bit more layering. The other thing that I think that all art journalists must have is a white ink pad. Oh, a white ink pad. So which is your favourite, Jennifer? I like using the Hero Arts one. Uh -huh. It's the... Hero Hughes, it's called Unicorn, uh -huh. and it's this one that I'm using today is older than I am, and that's saying something. <laughs> but it's still, it looks grubby when you look at it, but it still stamps white. It's hard to find a good white one. And this is putting that little bit of white into the page. It's not, yeah, that's better. I need good pressure because it's going down on top of lots of other colour now. And again, I'm quite happy to stamp across some of that original rice paper because this is starting to pull the page together and it makes it look like it belongs. Um, it's pushing some things into the background. As soon as you stamp over something, like you can see here, I've stamped over that hazelnut or whatever it is. Actually, it's probably a chestnut. They're all prickly, aren't they? Mm. Yeah, so I'm suspecting that's a chestnut, and I've just done some of my white stamping across. It doesn't need to look like what it is. Mm. It's just that overall effect that it gives when you've finished it. 
You can also then at this point start doing a little bit of mark making. Oh, so what do you mean by bit... mark making, Jennifer? Literally making some marks. Look, I've done some dots on the page. <laughs> this is a nice fluoro pink. And you what marker be... are you using? Posca. Good old Posca paint pens. We have Posca paint pens here at Crafters Cupboard, but honestly, you can go to Office Works. They have a fabulous range down there. You can always do click and collect at the moment. So I've just put in a bit of fluoro. See how that pink fluoro mm. again? And I'm tapping it. I've done these funny little markings, little hashes and dots like that. And then I just tap across them. And it spreads them out so they look like splatters. Mm. I don't really want them to look like dots. I want them to look splattery. Yeah, and that's a way of doing it and controlling it and, and not get paint everywhere. Correct. And um, for me, Posca paint pens are the best thing. For doing little jobs like this, they're great. So again, more layers of paint into the page. That little bit of fluoro gives it a bit of a pop in various places. And it's starting to look more how I want it. I'm going to get my trusty assistant to pass me my Prisma coloured pencils from over in the corner. And without saying a single word, he's doing it. We all need these men in the background, don't we, Michelle? To we help certainly us. do. We'd be lost without them. Yeah. So a little bit of that. And the other thing that you can use to give your page a little bit of an oomph is these great fat fluoro pencils mm. from Karen Dash look how fat they are they're amazing if you did the art by Marlene classes when we brought her out and what seems like a thousand years oh, it ago certainly does 2019 wasn't it <laughs> uh -huh. Marlene introduced us to these. Now, can you see that on my rice paper, just on the very edge of the stem, I'm just running my fluoro pencil around. Marlene calls this meraki. It's making the page your own. And I'm just lifting that green vine, which looked a little bit drab, and putting a little bit more colour into it, just to pop it out a little bit from the page. Mm. So sometimes when people art journal, this can be kind of the scary part. How do you suggest they start with sort of doing some, some doodling? Pick up the pencil and just go for it. <laughs> Look, all I'm doing is following the lines of that stem. I just went round the edge of the bud, literally. And I'm just using the pencil very lightly. I'm not being too heavy handed with it. Just a very gentle touch through. That's it. And it just makes this stem of the rose and the leaves pop out a little bit more. Brings them back out from the page. So nothing too difficult. That was all I did. And then for the pink part in the bud here. Again, just a little bit of the brighter pink fluoro up the top there. Don't worry too much if you get it out of kilter. You can see here, I'm just doing a little bit of pencil in there. I'm not even bringing it all the way down so that you get that blended idea. I'm not losing any sleep over this, Michelle. It's just very <laughs> quick. Yep. Following some of the lines around the edge of the flower, just so it just gives a little bit more colour and it starts to pop that flower out from the page and make it look a little bit more special. And doing this Meraki thing is all about making the page your own and just embellishing it up. So not too difficult. I think most people have played with a colour pencil in their childhood at least. And it's almost just like a little bit of scribbling that I'm doing. <coughs> Excuse me. Bit of a tickle in the throat. Talking more than usual. <laughs> so can you see now that that little bit of fluoro pencil has really popped the flower out? Yeah, we can. 
haven't lost the shape of it. So it's starting to head towards the end. Um, later on, I'll take a brown colored pencil if I can find one. Here's one here. And again, same thing. Just putting a little bit of color into that chestnut. Yeah, sometimes we don't think of adding pencil to coloured pencils to art journaling, do we? Um, we use coloured pencils a lot. And again, the paper artsy paints, you can put just about anything over them. They certainly love coloured pencils. You can put markers over them, your Posca paint pens, an ordinary pen. I'm just going to grab a uni ball eye black pen. And I'm just going to do a little bit of a cement writing here now. So you can see how quickly it just glides over the paintwork. And I'm going to scribble something about today. <laughs> okay. So many thoughts and feelings about today, isn't there? Happy to share the frustrations of the lockdown. Our driving too many people to the brink get the shot <laughs> so that is you know a tv ad at the moment get the shot mm -hmm. so i've put get the shot there to remind myself that that's what the theme of the day is on our media at the moment but if you look at that asemic writing that I was talking about earlier, you can't read it, can you? <laughs> no, it's just lovely little script. Yeah, it just looks very scripty in the page. But I know what it says because I wrote it. By tomorrow, I will have forgotten. <laughs> I might be able to make out the last phrase, but that's about it. My little dragonfly over here, and what I think I'm trying to convey now is that we're at that point in the page where I'm just tootling. I just need a blackish coloured pencil or a dark grey would probably be fine. And I'm just going to bring my dragonfly or praying mantis or whatever it was that's sitting on the edge of the rose. I'm just bringing back his shape so that we can and colour it in a little bit. It was sort of a greyed colour. But he ended up with a bit of pink on his body. I'm sure he isn't <laughs> born like that. So just that's all I'm doing to it, really. I'm just going along the edge. So for those that are scared of a colour pencil, you don't need to be. And any nice soft coloured pencil will do. Prismas, lightning fast ones, whatever you've got, really. I think most... Most art journalists invariably can um, lay their hands on some coloured pencils without too much trouble. So that's pretty much it, Michelle, apart from some gold splatter. Uh -huh. Now, you might wonder, how do you do the splatter thing? There have been a lot of brushes out there for splattering. Tim Holtz is his famous splatter brush. But the Jennifer Cooper method for today, because we don't want people to um, be too intimidated by splashing. Actually, do you know what I'm going to do? This is the beauty of art journaling. Taking a little bit of that leftover rice paper, the bit that's got the writing on it. Great brush. This little space up here is annoying me. So, that medium, straight over. Now, because I'm going to put the matte medium over the top of the rice paper, the colour of the paint is coming through. Yeah. But the, the rice paper script has pushed that paint colour even further into the background. And because I really liked that effect, I'm going to do it again. <laughs> and I'm just going to pop it in here. And by putting this right in the middle of the page, 
you also take away from the seam of the page going up. Ah. So see how the rose is right in the middle? Mm-hmm. It's gone over the seam of the page. So it gives both sides of the page the width so that the eye no longer notices that seam binding down the middle. It's more, it takes away from it and it covers it up to a certain extent. Now, remembering the rule of thirds, I need to have three pieces of this rice paper with the script writing on it. I've got one there and one there, so I'm probably going to pop this one in about here to give it a little bit of balance. That bit's in the way, so you rip it off. And again, once the matte medium's brushed over the top, and that'll dry in a minute, you can still see the paint colour shining through from underneath. So again, this is providing yet another layer to the page. And then now we'll do our gold splatters because I'm finally getting to my happy place with this one. (laughs) Excellent. So a puddle of gold paper artsy paint in the middle of your craft mat and liberally fill it with water. Mm -hmm. Very liberally. Slosh it around with a paintbrush. Any paintbrush will do. It does not have to be the fancy splatter brushes or even a fan brush. Uh And I'm not going to worry too much at all about where this splatter goes on my page. Mm -hmm. And just tap it. And it can go all over my rows. It can go all over my script. It can go over my asymmet writing and push that into the page. But you can't beat gold splatter. It is you amazing just, the difference it makes. You have to have it. <laughs> I think I've still got some on my drink bottle from when Tracy Scott made us do it in your class. Oh, yes. Now, Tracy Scott is the queen of gold splatter, as we all know. <laughs> and um, you can just about hear her cheering in the background when you do this. <laughs> So there you go, all splattered up. And I think we're done. Fantastic. So there you go, ladies. You don't have to take all day to do an art journal page. With the help of some rice paper, some paint, a few coloured pencils, a few stencils and stamps, you can create an art journal page in under an hour that looks pretty, and it just helps you get the feel goods for the day. <laughs> Excellent. Well, Jennifer, we'll get you to turn your camera back around and we'll wrap it up. Well, I hope you enjoyed that. Wasn't it just wonderful to watch Jennifer go through those stages? And it's like you said, it was really less than an hour to bring out. And at first you're going, oh, I'm not sure about that. But then you can see as you keep bringing in those layers. And in a way, it's trusting that process. And it is amazing how it comes together. So, Jennifer, thank you so much for sharing that with us today. My pleasure. And I hope that everyone enjoyed the quick demonstration and realise if you haven't tried it before, give art journaling a go. It's heaps of fun and doesn't have to take all day, doesn't need a huge amount of products. And we're always here and happy to help people get started into the process. (laughs) Excellent. And so, Jennifer, where is the best place for people to find out more about Crafters Cupboard? Um, You can pop onto our website and I'll just take this opportunity to tell you we changed our web hosting company just before Christmas and you will know, Michelle, that when you do data migration, particularly with, with data that's been on a fairly old piece of software, once you do data migration, you get corrupted data. Oh, dear. we, we've had a bit of a struggle with our website the last few months, and we really do appreciate the fact that our customers have persevered. <laughs> so we've um, spent a considerable amount of money getting our website updated, and the developers are telling us it's going to go live in the next 24 to 48 hours. Oh, okay. Mm. So there are elements of it that will still look familiar to our users. Mm-hmm. It's not It's not a greatly different experience per se because you still use the website in a similar way, but they'll just notice that it's got a slightly more modern feel to it. 
Um, it's going to be very fast and all that gobbledygook computer language that keeps popping up on screens <laughs> has uh, disappeared. All the photos have come back. Oh, I'm good. That's always helpful. That <laughs> and the speed will be fantastic. And we're all going to be so much happier with it. So go to our website, um, www.crafterscover.com.au. Uh, you can phone us. Uh, we're on mobile, mm -hmm. 0479, no, 478. 109608. 159608. 159608. It's Angus's number, not mine. So you'll get Angus on the end of the phone. Um, we stock all the paper artsy range. There's not much in their range that we don't stock. We love the Scrap FX pro products, which we think are fabulous. We've got Carabelle and we've got Dilusions and we've got everything under the sun here for all your mixed media and your art journaling needs. We run classes, our studio is here at home and we have a shop at home. So you can make an appointment by phoning up to come and shop at any time. At the moment, we're still running click and collect and of course we're posting orders out daily. So we're here based down in Berwick and we're just a phone call away for anyone who wants to get into art journaling and start having some fun. Excellent. And Jennifer, and thank you so much for helping us face our fear and get started with art journaling. That's fine. Thanks very much for having me. Excellent. Thanks, Jennifer. Well, we hope you enjoyed that session. Oh, my goodness, wasn't there so many tips and tricks there to um, get your teeth into as well, from using the rice papers and the matte medium to blending up the layers with the with the paints and the stencils and then doing the stamping on top. And it really is just a way of bringing all those techniques that you've learnt through all your different paper crafting. So go and check out the Crafters Cupboard website, support Angus and Jennifer in lovely Berwick in Victoria. And like I said, if, they've got any, if you've got any questions, give them a call and I'm sure they'll be able to help. So this is Michelle signing off. We hope you have a crafty day.